Modern Warfare 2's reveal is here, and man, we've got so much to talk about. Earlier today, we put out a video talking about 16 things that you should know about Modern Warfare 2, following a briefing that myself and a handful of other creators and press sat in from Infinity Ward that dove into some of the top-down perspective of the content offering this upcoming year. In this video, however, we're going to be going a lot more in-depth with what we're discussing and everything with this video focused on what I'm sure plenty of people will be looking forward to, multiplayer. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to seeing any one thing in particular in Modern Warfare 2 this year? Any particular weapon you'd like to see? Map, mode, operator, mission and campaign? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. And if you're excited for Modern Warfare 2, you find this at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And finally, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay there with all things Modern Warfare 2. Today is just the tip of the iceberg. Tomorrow, we've got a campaign gameplay walkthrough with Summer Games Fest, along with more content on the channel coming throughout tomorrow and the rest of the week, breaking down in more depth every aspect of what we learn. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button to stay on top of all of it and join the community. For now though, let's talk about multiplayer. So a sort of disclaimer to start things off here, what we got from Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer details are some specifics and some top-down stuff. Obviously today is not any sort of major multiplayer reveal, it's the worldwide reveal giving some basic understanding of the campaign, setting, storyline, detailing some of the additions on offer, and some of the other stuff building out in the world. But we did learn a little bit about multiplayer from this pre-briefing that we had, offering a slight glimpse of what we can expect. Additionally, personally, I was not able to play the game as my briefing was remote. I have no idea for those that went out to the studio in LA if they did, but even if they did, I kind of imagine their embargoes follow previous ones that I've done before in the past where any MP impressions are embargoed until late summer. So today, what we have on deck is what we learned about in this briefing and probably all we'll see in regards to multiplayer in an official capacity for quite some time. But that said, let's dive into it. To begin, let's start out with the core concepts and pillars for Modern Warfare 2 as described by the team. For multiplayer, they ended up stating that their pillars for this were to support established player behaviors with every aspect, and design-wise, grouping players to allow success for all players, no matter what playstyle. They also wanted to embrace emergent play. That was something they stated was inspired by Warzone's crazy plays, kind of giving that sandbox mode and taking the approach of quite literally anything you can think up, you can do in-game. So if you want to do some crazy outplay maneuver, you can. Designing every bit of equipment and everything in mind with that sort of what could happen next mentality. And they also stated this is their best in class multiplayer experience. They again, as we talked about in the video earlier today, wanted to make this a culmination of everything, the best thing they could have ever made. Now, in doing this, in identifying these pillars, they established player behaviors in sort of three different types. The rushers, the people that rush into every engagement going only kill happy. The sentinel, as they described it, the sort of defensive players that protect themselves, but don't necessarily just camp an objective. And then the stalker, the people that play the objective, but will also be conscious of the world around them. The players that are going in and out of different corridors, knowing, okay, there's probably gonna be a guy that pops up over there since they went in over there. They're a bit more reactionary, watching player movements, but still have the kill potential. They stated that they built these styles out with different ship loadouts with six default classes crafted, custom tailored to each of these sort of behaviors. Then again, coming back to that embrace of the emergent play, they wanted a variety of 1v1 outcomes through player movement mechanics, new vehicle gameplay, and specialized equipment, as well as just that simple one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Now, when it comes to a lot of different mechanics, they overviewed a little bit of what's coming to multiplayer. As we talked about in today's earlier video, swimming was something that was up on deck here at this, where water is going to be an integral part between campaign, multiplayer, as well as co-op. So swimming is going to be something we are going to see in a Modern Warfare game for, I believe, the first time at this point. So for swimming, they ended up stating that visibility was something they had to tackle here, because when you jump in, water is going to be murky. They had to make sure that that was something reactionary to the player and their engagement. They wanted to add it for escape and evasion ability. They wanted new combat rules here, which is something that kind of plays into the ballistic system in place for this year. As we talked about in today's earlier video, water is going to be something that just like in real life decreases that bullet velocity. So it will take multiple shots to shoot in or out of the water to take down an enemy. Boats and amphibious vehicles are going to be something we see in multiplayer as well, which is definitely cool and offers a bit more in terms of some unique gameplay experiences. And when we get to it, I'm really curious to see how this will play in the larger scale game modes that we'll see similar to Ground War later this year. Could offer up quite a different few number of ways to play each engagement. And they built out equipment for swimming as well. In our briefing, they did confirm outside of swimming that dolphin diving would be a thing here, and it's an escape mechanic. 
and it's being worked the same way as rumored. Tap or hold will either activate the dolphin dive or the slide. It's entirely up to the user, but it's not something that's only one or the other. It is something that you have both the slide and the dolphin dive, so you're not sacrificing one in Modern Warfare 2 as opposed to Modern Warfare 2019. Instead, you just have the best of either. There was a new feature called the ledge hang that was previewed here a little bit, which wasn't really explained too much in depth, but it seems like it's an ability to peek with pistols for extra platforming, kind of how you could with Modern Warfare 2019 and beyond, where if you went up a ladder, you kind of peeked with that pistol. It seems like that, but instead it seems like it's in relation to mantling something, so that ledge hang here. But anyways, dynamic vehicle gameplay was something that was mentioned where one of the campaign missions that we saw was honestly the best example here of this. I don't know if or when this will be showed before the launch of the game, but there was a mission where it's kind of a vehicle chase sequence, but you have to jump from vehicle to vehicle. But in doing so, you also jump into and drive the vehicle while leaning out of the window and doing all that kind of stuff to shoot at enemies. So that said, that's going to be coming to MP as well, where you lean out windows, you can climb on rooftops, you can knock off doors, blow out tires, and actually do damage to the vehicles with them reacting as such. So it doesn't offer cover if the door gets blown off. If you knock out a tire, the vehicle will lean one way or the other, depending on what tire you ended up shooting out. That being visible in the trailer itself, where you're upside down shooting at the armored transport or truck or whatever, and that sort of does a flip a little bit more exaggerated and drastic, I'll add, but the same sort of concept is shown off here out of that. And it seems like there will be vehicle repairs here, it was mentioned briefly. The one big thing differentiating between Modern Warfare 2019 vehicles in terms of after destruction is that it seems like these are going to be staying there. So they mentioned that they've removed these for server load in Modern Warfare 2019, but it seems like this will be something that stays in the game, offering more cover in unique locations and other aspects that come along with that then. They ended up mentioning that there's a new helicopter troop carrier, so maybe that helicopter, but with more people that you can pick up or drop off, kind of increasing the inventory of players you can have on it. They mentioned more amphibious vehicles will be coming again to accommodate that water, but then that's where we jump over into some outside of gameplay stuff where it comes down to user end items. Let's talk about some special equipment here at this. We ended up getting a couple of things detailed here to us. The tactical camera was one of the first ones that we learned about in which this is a field upgrade in which if you place it, you can jump in and see where players are in that field of view of the camera. But the interesting part is that with the sort of emphasis on teamwork, if multiple players have this tactical camera equipped and they place it, whenever you jump into yours, you can actually jump between yours and however many other teammates you have available as well. So they're interlinking in that regard. We also learned about something called the drill charge where you shoot or place it and it lands on a wall. It will then drill through said wall and drop a grenade on the other side of it. So interesting here at that it might be good for some breach and clear stuff how practical it'll be we'll have to wait and see we learned about a new one called the ddos which the mp team stated they had a fun time naming that one got a couple of laughs here out of that but it's a handheld field upgrade that acts as an emp device this will give you a hud telling you where equipment is and vehicles that you can use it on and it will take out equipment and even stall out vehicles so pretty powerful in that sense and can be pretty advantageous we ended up learning about an inflatable decoy which is pretty hilarious in concept we'll see how effective it is actually in the the gameplay itself, but it's manually deployable. It's a Kevlar decoy, kind of in the sort of proximity mind. It immediately pops up type of mentality with it, but it's meant to scare a player or take them off here because it does sound like a player when it pops up. And also it's interesting because they made this work where it reacts with the environment that it's on. So if you ended up putting it under a table, it will be in a prone position. If you end up putting it on water, it'll strike a swimming position. Or if you just put it out in the open, it's a standing position. So pretty interesting to see how that all works out. But one thing curiously absent from the discussion Discussion about field upgrades is dead silence. So we don't have anything confirmed about that. It was rumored that we'd be seeing it return as a perk, but right now it's at least not mentioned as a new field upgrade. So maybe a step in the right direction, but for right now, still a question mark on that one. Let's talk about now some map styles. This is the second to last section here of this video, but we learned about what is called battle maps and core maps. Battle maps are the large exploratory maps in which they stated they learned a lot from Verdansk. So that's something that's going to be your larger size maps for accommodating ground war or whatever equivalent we'll see here within Modern Warfare 2. We don't know if that rumor of Blitz is coming. We don't know if that rumor of ground war returning is coming. Right now, we just know that we're going to have some sort of larger scale map that we can end up having. Having. And we also don't know, unfortunately, any sort of player counts with that. Again, I imagine for those that went out to LA, if they got to play the game, they saw a little bit of that player count, but that'll be under embargo for quite some time. They ended up detailing two of these maps, one called Saeed and one called Sarif Bay. Saeed is an intense urban combat map with a marriage of core MP and sandbox materials, very exploratory and platformy as described. So excited to see how that one all plays out. And then Sarif Bay is a tourist fishing village with a sort of water playground, a lot of water 
modern elements here to it to showcase some of that swimming mechanic, those vehicles on top of it, and everything that goes along with it. Then, as for our core maps, that's where they said they're small, refined, traditional 6v6 maps, built exclusively for that traditional MP experience. And one thing is that they ended up mentioning this is trending towards those smaller maps. So for those of you guys that like Shipment, Shoot House, maybe not as small as Shipment, maybe more so closer to Shoot House, maybe a little bit bigger, these are going to be the sort of sizing and pacing that we'll see here with this. So for those camo grinders out there, this might be your best option here for it. These are stated as going to be contrasting with the battle maps, so not as much parkour and climbing materials and everything like that, but instead more so linear gameplay. We ended up seeing three maps here, Museum set in Spain, Grand Prix, a racetrack set in Asia, one thing that was cool kind of with that is that they mentioned that this is on a nighttime setting but that the race actually is going on in the background now whether or not that's a sort of environmental hazard we'll have to wait and see i think that'd be pretty cool that you have the option to walk across the track and if you're not careful you get taken out by a car that'd be cool but we'll see how that all works out and then farm 18 which is an undisclosed training facility they said what if we sort of took shoot house and and made it a little bit more so that was the design element behind that one but that's your maps and what to expect here in regards to that and what we learned of so far Back Battle maps and core maps, again, sort of accommodating both frenetic 6v6 play for those traditional MP experiences, but also larger battle maps for those that really enjoy the ground war experiences and something larger. Now, finally, what we'll talk about here in regards to multiplayer is they detailed some new game modes coming. Of course, TDM, Domination, the classics like that are all coming at launch here, but they detailed briefly two game modes called Knockout and one called Prisoner Rescue. Knockout is sort of gunfight meets core MP, where you end up having to pick up a package. It's kind of a king of the hill mode. It's sounds like where the last one with the package wins so if you really want to get ballsy you can go in take that package and immediately end up being the one to fight everybody off or you can play it a little bit stealthier you can play it sort of until those last couple of engagements and then prisoner rescue is something where it brings the breaching and sieging gameplay to modern warfare where you have to save prisoners or eliminate the enemies now i of course don't have any hands-on experience here with this but if this is anything like vip i don't see myself playing this all that much they'd really have to sort of refine that formula that black ops cold war introduced to make it something worthwhile but I guess we'll see here in time. I'd imagine that that's one of the core game modes we end up seeing outside of TDM, Domination, everything like that that comes to the beta. So maybe we'll end up seeing that here before launch. But anyways, that's multiplayer and what we learned here so far. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you guys looking forward to anything in particular? Are you hoping to see anything else in particular? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2. But that said, thanks so much for watching. Monazza Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Hopefully you guys are excited for Modern Warfare 2. Take care and peace.